So in physics, whenever we want to describe an object or a system of interest, we describe that object using different types of physical quantities. For example, let's take our object to be a moving car. And our car is moving from some city X to another city Y. Now, if we were to describe our car, our object, we can describe our car using this, these physical quantities. For example, we can talk about the velocity of our car. We can talk about the speed of our car, the acceleration of our car, the mass of our car. We can talk about the temperature of our car, the momentum of our car. We can talk about the force our car feels due to gravity. So all these physical quantities are used to describe our car, our object, and the state that that object is in. And all these physical quantities can be categorized into two different categories, scalar physical quantities and vector physical quantities. So let's begin with scalar. Now a scalar is simply a physical quantity that only has a magnitude and it does not have a direction. In other words, all these guys are examples of scalars. So speed, distance, time, electric charge, mass, temperature, all these guys have no sense of direction. In other words, let's take temperature for example. Whenever you specify your temperature of the car, say it's 80 uh, Fahrenheit, you never specify your direction, right? It makes no sense to say it's 80 degrees pointing upward or 80 degrees pointing sideways or downward. That makes no sense. And that's because temperature is a scalar quantity. Now, a vector is a physical quantity that has both magnitude and direction. <coughs> For example, velocity, displacement, force, gravitational field, all these guys are vectors. They are physical quantities that describe both magnitude and our direction. For example, let's take the force. The force. So what is the force on the car? What is the gravitational force on the car? Right? Well, it's simply force equals mg, right? And it's always pointing downward. So you have to specify the force. It's always pointing downward, perpendicular to our ground, and has a magnitude of some f equals mg amount. So force, like velocity, displacement, and gravitational field, have both magnitude and direction. Now, the way you will present our vector is simply by writing our symbol and then writing our vector on top, our arrow on top. So, this is how you write vector, displacement, force, and gravitational field. Now, notice that velocity and speed are similar. And that's because velocity has speed. Velocity's magnitude is the speed. But then when you mention the speed, you also have to mention your direction. So if you were to draw a V without the arrowhead on top, that would specify that it's the speed. It's only the magnitude. And if you draw my arrow on top, then that becomes a velocity. Then that becomes magnitude, so speed, as well as your direction. So you can represent vectors graphically by using arrows. The length of our arrow represents or is proportional to the magnitude, the amount of our physical quantity, while the direction of that arrow represents our direction that our object is moving in. For example, let's take these two vectors. So we have two velocity vectors pointing in the same exact direction. Now notice that these two arrows have different sizes. So this guy is twice as long as this guy. So that means the following. Suppose this is car A moving in this direction and it has a velocity of 50 miles per hour. That means another car uh, car B would be moving in the same direction but with half as much velocity, so half as much speed or 25 miles per hour. And that's how you represent vectors. Now we usually represent these guys on an XY plane, right? So if this is their, our XY plane, then we can represent another two vectors different from these guys by using the following representation. So we always begin at the origin and we end at some point in time. So at some point. So our point here is 2, 2. And the way we represent this vector is simply by writing the 
0.22. Likewise, we look at this vector, it begins at the origin 0, 0 and ends at the point negative 1 and 4. So this is how we represent our vector. And to go back from this guy to this guy, we simply begin at the origin and we end our arrow at the point uh, for this guy 2, 2 and for this guy negative 1, 4. So we draw, we end at the point and we finish it with an arrow. Now notice that these guys have different directions as well as different magnitudes because this arrow is longer than this arrow and that means this arrow has a greater magnitude than this arrow. So if these two arrows represent the velocity vectors for our moving cars, these guys will be moving in different directions and with different speeds.